his play, Marius, on Broadway. Um, and so not only is he a really talented performer, but he's also a very good teacher and also a very, very nice man. And I am very grateful for that. So, here's my friend Arbeiter Robinson. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, here's the thing. I didn't agree to come down. She actually choked me and she's trying to me. <laughs> totally, 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 totally. Um, no, um, I've, I've wanted to come and meet you all and talk to you all for a long time. But once we met, she started telling me, like, all of, all of the things that we're doing here in theater at this school. I was kind of amazed. And there was a tiny, tiny part of my brain that was like, there's no way they're doing all this work. And if they are doing all this work, there's no way it's actually good. And, like, <laughs> and, I, and I have to eat my words because I've seen a few like video clips and um, I just walked through your scene shop and I hear what's happening and like you're doing all this work and it's actually really, really good and I'm, I'm amazed. So kudos to you for it. So, so, um, so yeah, so I am, I am one of those lucky people that actually <laughs> started here and like figured out how to get to Broadway. I didn't really figure it out, it's kind of happened. But um, uh, all those things that he yells at you about, like, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. We actually get paid an okay amount of money to actually do them every single day. So um, so, so like, this is really your time. Like, I wanted to come and meet you all and talk to you all. This is your time. There's no like set program as to how this has to run, but I want to get to know you, you get to know me, questions, comments, concerns, or beliefs. I'll answer as many questions as I can. We'll hang out, we'll have some fun, and we'll hear for however long this class is. So, questions, comments, concerns, or beliefs. While you think of a question, comments, concerns, or beliefs, I'm going to myself. Come on in! These are tech kids who are coming in. Come on! We love you too! Oh, yeah. So, um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me. So, my, so my name is actually Arbender, which is crazy. My parents, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know where that's from. Anyways, I'm from. Uh, this small, small, small farm in town called Pasco Squad. Um, the entire town is known for like how Dude, you can't come here. And I was like, all right, whatever. So um, one day, my 
phone rang and it was this nun. Sister, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's like Marie, Sister, Sister Marie Leon LaCroix. And she was like, I've been there. I was like, yes. Based on your SAT score, we offered you all this money. Have you thought about where you're going to school? And I was like, I thought about it, but it's not happening now, so no. And she was like, well, we have, we have space for you if you want to come to this school. And I was like, great. Do you have a free law program? She's like, no. She's like, oh, okay. Oh, do you have a journalism program? She's like, no. I said, oh. <laughs> what else? And my parents are looking at me like, I was like, do you have a theater program? And she's like, yes. And my parents are like, oh. <laughs> like I was like, yes, I'll do that. And she goes, but it's full. And I was like, oh. And so I was like, well, who do I need to talk to? So I talked to the head of the department, and he said to me, he's like, hey, we're having auditions tomorrow. The school was five hours away from where you live. Why don't you come up? We'll see you, and then see if we can find a spot for you in, in the program. And I was like, what do I need to do for the auditions? So he told me. I hung up the phone. And my parents were like, what happened? I said, I have to go up there and audition tomorrow. I need to sing two songs, and I need to do a monochrome, is what I said. My parents were like, oh. I was like, they told me to do a monochrome. So we get out the dictionary, and we're like looking at monochrome, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And my dad goes, monologue. He said monologue, and I was like, oh, monologue. What's a monologue? Like, this is how, like, I did theater, but I didn't get the training that you all are getting. So I was like, what's a monologue? So we looked it up, we drove to Barnes and Noble, we bought a monologue book in two song books, and we drove, my mother drove, my dad and I were in the backseat memorizing all this stuff. I auditioned for the school. Got into the school. They were like, "Have you applied?" I was like, "Nope." So I got this all apply. They're like, "Did you get financial aid?" I was like, "Nope." Financial aid. They're like, "Where are you gonna live?" I was like, "I don't know." They're like, "Housing department's down the street." Did housing. Went back home. Packed up my car. And two months later, went to school at this tiny school in Wisconsin that no one's ever heard of. Um, and then I graduated in 1998. 98. Yeah, I've been working professionally ever since. I moved to New York in 2004 because. I was living in Florida. I was studio focused for the Walt Disney Organization for a really long time. And, um, and <laughs> I was going through the worst, this is way too personal. I was going through the worst breakup of my life. And I got really mad one day, so I hopped on my pickup truck and I drove to the airport and I parked in short term parking, went inside, it was like New York or LA right now. And she was like, there's a fight to New York right now. And I was like, but I'm going to New York. So I flew to New York, landed at LaGuardia, called the only person I knew in New York City only person I knew in New York City. I was like, Forrest, yeah. Hey, does that offer still stand that I can see where your college driver came to visit New York? Yeah, are you coming to New York? Not here. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm at an audition for this, this show called Hairspray, and um, tell the cab driver to take you to this address, and I'll meet you there, and then after my audition, I'll take you to my apartment. I was like, I'll audition while I'm there. <laughs> and a month later, I start rehearsals for Hairspray on Broadway. So that's how the whole journey, the Broadway journey began for me. But I thought, it was, I thought it was a fluke because I swore, I was like, A, they hired the wrong person. B, I'm not that good. C, they're gonna fire me like in a month. So like, I kept sleeping on my friend's couch because I was like, I'm not getting my own apartment because I know this is gonna end. This is a fluke, this is not supposed to happen. Like, no, 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 no. So after six months, <laughs> and, they, and they renewed my and they renewed my contract, and I was like, okay, I guess I better get a place to live. Oh, and I guess I better go and sell my house in Florida. And oh, maybe I should think about getting my car from the parking lot at the airport. Needless to say, it wasn't there. So um, yeah. So now, fast forward, I don't know how many years do the math, and then um, now I'm here. So now, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or beliefs. Go ahead. What was like the most shocking thing that you didn't expect to happen like when you went to Broadway? Like just like in uh, rehearsals or like the show? Like what, what shocked you most? You know what? There are a number of ways that I can answer that story. There you are. I was like, where did she go? <laughs> uh, first, the only difference between what you're doing now and what we do on Broadway is the paycheck and how people react when we leave the table. Like when we go off the stage or how people react, those are the only things that are different. 
other than that, the process is exactly the same. Right? This costume is brilliant. That costume, I don't know what that is. Right? It's the same. This person is truly, truly amazing, and this person is having a hard time with what they're doing in right? It's all the same. This moment makes total sense to me. I'm still struggling with this moment. It's all the same. I love this show. I'm not a fan of this show. It's all the same. The only thing that's different is the paycheck and how people react. Right? And in my mind, I always thought, well, once I get to Broadway, angels are going to sing. Snow is always going to be 70 degrees warm. Like, the world is going to be like a completely different world. And it's not. It's the exact same thing. The process is the same. The camaraderie that you have between friends and cats, it's all the same. And to me, that was a shock. But it was also one of the, like, the greatest things about it because it was familiar. And one thing that I that I learned about theater is that what you're doing now is what theater companies are doing all over the world. So you're part of like this special club, right? So I don't know, to me that was like this amazing, warming, cool thing that we feel like we have in the right place. And I, and I know what this world is, you know. Yeah. Um, another way to answer that is it's cool to see people that I look up to. And I'll use Cher Renee Scott as an example, right? I did a little more with her. And Cher Renee Scott freaks out before every single show, the same way I freak out before every single show. Cher Renee Scott is in her dressing room, like singing uh, I Want the Good Times Back over and over and over and over and over and over, and over or Foreign Force and Souls over and over again. And then opening her dressing room door and be like, does it sound okay? And I'm like, dude! You're Cher Renee Scott! Of course it's not okay. <laughs> But it's cool that these people that we look up to are actually just humans, and they go through the same struggles that we go through, right? It was really, really cool to me to be in an audition situation where, like, the person before me and the person after me are people that I'm like, I saw you on TV, like, last night. Like, that's so weird. So that we're all in the same boat, and we're all trying to do the same thing, and we're all struggling the same way. It was a shock to me because I thought, well, once I get once I get on Broadway, then like I don't have to do that struggle anymore. Or once I make it to Broadway, it's gonna be easy. No, the struggle is always the same, and that was also shocking to me. Like, oh my goodness, these are all just humans that are doing the same things that I'm doing. We have the same voice teacher. Like, this is crazy. So yeah, if that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Questions, comments, concerns, or beliefs. Go ahead. Share it to the <laughs> I probably learned the most in the shows that I didn't book, right? Um, <laughs> like, why did I get that show? Oh, that's why. <laughs> um, that's tough. That's tough because, shoot, we're always learning, right? But we're always changing and growing. In fact, if I were to go back and do, okay, wait, the movie one. If I were to still the same age that I was 11, 12, 13 years ago, and the same size, but I knew what I know now, if I were to go back and do hairspray again, yeah, there were a thousand things that I would do, because I had more knowledge, I had more experience, right? So I think, I think you're constantly learning with every show, and I think, this is just my opinion, I think once you stop learning in shows, then maybe you should become like a doctor or a lawyer or a police officer, because that's the whole point, is that we're learning. A, we're learning about new people, we're learning about the characters that we create. We're learning new tactics and new techniques of how to make those characters come alive, right? We're learning how to communicate with the audience and with these people, and the audience is always different every night, so you communicate differently. So I think you're always learning. Um, I will say this, I'm not a good tap dancer, I'm not a good tap dancer, so I just, uh, last year or the year before, did a show called Shuffle Along that was all tap. Um, and for the three years that we were in, in the creative mode for that show, we were, some of us were also in tap class, like three, four, five years a week for like three or four hours a day. So I learned a lot there. <laughs> um, when I went, when I joined the cast of Les Mis, I had been saying music like that since I graduated college in that day. So um, that was a big learning curve to figure out, A, how to train my body to sing music and then B, the new process I had to use to keep myself healthy for that. Because when I was doing hairspray, it's like, uh, 
If I want to stay up late tonight, I can't because it's hairspray and we're kids and we don't have to sound great. But like in Lay Biz, you can't be like, oh, oh, it's, it's a little dusty today. Like, I'm going to try and sing it anyway. It's not going to work. You see what I'm saying? So it's just different. It's different. And then like uh, Beautiful was also different because in Beautiful, just like Shuffle Along, we were all playing beautiful. And some of those people were still alive. So like all of the choices that we made, all of the choices that we made, all the choices we made, all the riffs that we decided to do musically had to be grounded in what that person would have actually done. Like, I'm like, I got a cool riff in my head. Oh. And I'm like, you can't do this. You never would have done it. Ever, never, 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 never. That's 2015, and we're talking 1963. So, yeah. So, like, that's that's also different. And then, like, maybe these people play, like, play, play, play. Tell me what it's like. No. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, you're 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 always learning. Yeah. You know? Cool. I teach a lot of classes as well. And even when I teach students, I'm also learning. I'm learning new ways to communicate with them. Sometimes they bring things to the table. I'm like, oh, all right, that's a cool new way to look at it. Let me run with that. So, yeah, always learning. In fact, I learned something just the other day. I was talking to a little, I was teaching a little girl, and I was like, what do you do like when you get nervous or whatever? She says, well. She's like, all of you left is like four barber shows, whatever. She's like, well, you just have to be bigger than the fear. And I was like, what? <laughs> you have to be bigger than the fear. I was like, where did that come from? She's like, I made it up one day. And I was like, I'm stealing it. I'm stealing it. I'm putting it in my book, and I'm not even going to give you credit. <laughs> so yeah, so my new thing now is be bigger, be larger than the fear. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Questions, comments, and sorry, please. Go ahead. Funniest thing that's happened on stage is not supposed to happen. <laughs> 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 that's so good. I can't believe you picked that one. Okay, so, <laughs> so hairspray. Hairspray. My Broadway day is hairspray, right? And I'm super duper nervous. And I got cast in the show, and it had already been running for like a year or two. So I hadn't met the director, and I had never met the choreographer when I was in the show. So the dance captain and the stage manager taught me the entire show. Um, and there was an associate director that came in and worked with me, because I also understood the CV that worked with me on that. And know that on Broadway, everyone in the ensemble, everyone in the ensemble covers principal roles, right? Everyone covers the lead roles in the show. That's how we can run a show for years. So I covered the CV. Um, so I finally met Jerry Mitchell, came to a rehearsal, a brush up rehearsal. And I had probably been in the show for a year at this point. So my body knew how to do it. So Jerry comes in and he's like cleaning up a few things choreography wise, and then he comes to me and he goes, You're that again, are that again? He goes, So you're doing this thing and you can't stop me. And I said, Yeah. And he goes, Well, everyone goes here, well, well, and then we start the pony and we go around the passerelle. So a passerelle, you probably know, but if you don't know, is this ramp that essentially goes around the orchestra pit. So, and this is the edge of the stage, there is a hole and there's a ramp that goes around. And the cool thing about this passerelle, there were also two little ramps that made like a little hole here, big hole here, little hole there. And, and B, one, I'm standing on the little ramp. It's on a little angle. And I'm like, boom, boom, ah, 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 ah. and it's fixed. And the entire company then ponies all the way around the passerelle super fast. Come on, you, my tussles, go and shake your baby muscles. And we do the rest of the night, right? He goes, you're doing this weird thing. I said, what? He goes, well, First of all, the, the ramp is on an angle. And you're playing the angle even though the audience is here. And I see you taking a peek at where the hole is so then you can pony and be safe. And I said, yes, that's what I'm doing. Wonderful, yay. He goes, no. He goes, the whole point is that you play it front. And when the audience sees the entire company zoom up and around, they first get scared because they think you're all under the fall into the pit. But you know the set so well that you don't have to look down and you just go. And that's exciting for them to see. And I said, so what's the note? He said, well, the note is I want you to play it straight up and I don't want you to peek down and cheat before you do the thing. And I was like, all right, no. Wrote it down in my little book. Jerry Mitchell. And I was like, I met Jerry Mitchell. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, me. I did not rehearse said note. I just took the note. 
So we get to that point in the show, and my muscle memory kicks in. My brain told me, Arbinder, face straight out. So I face straight out. So I'm like, boom, pop, boom, pop. And my body was used to being here and turning this much to go up stage and around. So if I took this angle and moved it here, my body is used to going here. So I was like, pop, pop, boom. Because the entire company is running, my feet get clipped by the girl who plays Shelly down at Amino right behind me. So my entire torso is in the pit. I'm not going to go right? And my legs are on stage. And now, the, if that's not embarrassing enough, the entire company, the entire pass is zooming around this pass around. To avoid chaos, they simply jump over the
<laughs> and they're like, Arbenda, you have to do the South African Specialty Open Act. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went to the music director's office before the show. I rehearsed it a few times. She's like, yeah, you're perfect. You got it. You got it. The accent sounds right. You're good. You're good. You're good. So intermission happens. And know that like the ensemble men's dressing room is like a frat house. Like, we're always in trouble. Don't listen. We're always late. Like my first day, my first day in the building, my first day in the building, they they say places, places for act one. And my friend Joel then gets undressed and goes to take a shower. And I was like, we're at places, like we're in, do it. He's like, oh, that's the first place it's called. We'll be all right, right? And he, takes, and he still makes it the time, whatever. So like, we're a frat house. Like, we like rough house and all of a sudden we knock holes in the wall. Like, it's, it's completely inappropriate. It's completely inappropriate. Completely inappropriate. So, Don't give them any ideas. Do not listen, do not listen. Do not listen, do not listen. Do not listen. Do not listen. I'm doing this thing at the top of that too. So intermission comes, and I say to myself, and I, at the time, I was I was rehearsing the beautiful already, so like I was, you know, there was a lot of I'm like, oh, I need a nap. I see like a 30 second nap. And I'm like in a dressing room with like 13 dudes, right? So I just put my head down, take a little nap, and the next thing I know, I wake up and there is Oh. The dressing room. No one's in there. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So I throw on my dashiki, I throw on my hat, and I just run up to the stage, even though we're all supposed to enter from the back of the house. I'm like, I can like catch you, I can catch you. So I like run up the stairs, and as I get to the stage, I hear, I was like, I've been asleep so long that they figured out that A, I'm not at places. B. Someone else has to sing the solo. C, sound, was able to readjust the mics to figure out which mic to actually turn on for this. And I was like, oh my gosh. So then, being the honest person that I am, the stage manager goes, I know, Arminder, I know you were in the bathroom. Is your stomach okay? They had told stage manager that I had a bathroom issue and that I couldn't make it. And like, if I were a jerk, I, I should have just said, yes. I'm much better now. But I was like, no. Is that what they told I said, no. I fell asleep. I'm so sorry. And I was like, apologizing and apologizing. I got fined. And she's like, you should have just said you were in the bathroom. So I got fined and pay a fee for like making this mistake. She's not Italian, but that's true. Right? She's from Australia. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, the, so that was also embarrassing. He mind came. It was a long time before they asked me to do that, so <laughs> um, another time in Lion King. So, so in Lion King, I was a swing, so I had to cover like all these different characters, right? And there's this moment, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show, but there's this moment, really, really cool moment, where like grass comes up from the ground, gets taller and taller, and then you finally see that the grass is actually on our heads, and then our bodies are all here. We all look jacked, because I had to have amazing base bodies, right? Cool. <laughs> and then we have like these grass skirts on that you can kind of see through, but we move all the same way, and it's like really, really magical cool. And then the grass like does all these little formations, and then these puppets of like Mufasa and Simba like dance through there and all that kind of But one day they were like, oh, you have to do um, Young Simba puppet, and something called buzzer pole. Now this is normally a dancer track, not a singer track, but I was like, okay, I'm a swing, I have to do it. So I reviewed my notes, I was like, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. <clears throat> Came that time. It's a quick puppet change to go from, there's like a, there's like a shadow puppet that we do a step of first, where it's like flip from behind, you just see this, this shadow, this outline dance get lost, and then the real puppet comes on, like this, right? It's a super, super quick costume change. And um, I did it naked. So I was like, boo boo, and I was like, ah, I can't help. Blah, blah, blah. And then finally, when I get the Simba puppet on my body, it's late. And I missed the moment in the whole rotation where I'm supposed to like get through the people. So I was like, what do I do? What do I do? We can't not have Simba come on stage. What do I do? So I just try to fight my way through it. I'm like, excuse me, watch out, watch out. I'm sorry. And then I get stuck in the corner, and I'm just like, ah, I don't know what to do. So um, that was another embarrassing moment. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, lying was not my best work. <laughs> lots, of, lots of best words there. Oh. So yeah. 
Is that answer? Whose question was that? <laughs> so, that answers. Are we yeah. You have like five minutes. That's it? I know. Because what? Short okay, here we go. What's the yeah, difference okay. in process of like workshop versus reading versus passage? Sweet. Really, really fast. Reading, for the most part, you sit at a table. And a reading is a lot of analytical work and fighting work. Where like you say, I don't think the character would ever say this. This character would not say this word, they may say this word instead, right? That's where your training comes into play, right? Where you have to research these characters at the time and kind of figure out what that would be. But it's all table, right? A workshop, you may only do two or three scenes from the show, but you're workshopping them, getting ideas of how it's going to work, and it will change every single day you'll get new music every single day, right? A lab is like a workshop, but it's like on steroids, where you may have like sound and lights and a few costume pieces, it's all off book, and you're labbing. It's like a lab, a full like creative process of that. Um, those are the three differences. Does that answer your question? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I like labs better than workshops, um, and I love readings the most because I'm a very handy person. So I get hired on a lot of shows to do readings and labs and workshops, and sometimes I'll do the show. But that's okay. Here we go. But if you do all three, if you do all three, you still get paid. So there are a number of shows that I did all three, and every week that show's running anywhere in the world, any high school, whatever, I get a check. I'm like, oh, thanks. I love it. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh someone's doing Last Dance, the musical. Wonderful. That one was awful, but I got a check. So great. Here we go. Two more questions. Two more questions. Go ahead. Favorite show. My favorite show in the work that that I've ever been in. Difficult. That I've ever like in the world is parade. Some of my favorite show ever. I want to be Leo Frank so badly. Like you have no idea. For a number of reasons, if you know the show, I will never be Leo Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but in my living room, fierce. <laughs> right? It's amazing. Cool, cool. Um, wow. There are a lot of shows that I really like that I've done. I love every show that I've been a part of for different reasons. I think Shuffle Along is probably the most glorious experience I've ever had. Um, and Transit was probably the most difficult show with the Dr. Keller talked about. Um, that was a nightmare, but fun. Um, Hair was fun because we got to, we got to play like real characters. Um, I was telling the previous class that uh, sometimes Vietnam vets will write letters to the show saying, hey, this is my story, blah, blah, blah. We can take those letters and actually become that character that entire day the show, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, they're all different. I mean, Hairspray was my debut. Little Rabbit was my first original pass, and my first original pass album, so they all have Ragtime was my favorite show as a child, and I got to do it. I'm like, oh my god, I'm in Ragtime. So, um, yeah, I geek out still. Two more questions, two more questions. Go ahead. I've always wondered this. This is great. So as the book said, in actual versus of Broadway, like, no one talks about like everyone can. <laughs> Because that's a whole rehearsal way said pump up notes. You do your work, right? And if you learn something, if you learn something on Monday, if you learn something on Monday, it should be completely off book and memorized by Tuesday. Right? This is what this is what we expect. Does it always happen? No, but you have to figure out what you need to do in your process in order to do that. Because what's going to happen is, is that on Tuesday, we're going to run that scene and say, we don't like those lines, we don't like that, we don't like this, and we don't like that. But we can't decide what we don't like unless you do it 100%. And the only way you can do it 100% is if you do all of your homework. The lucky thing, we rehearse eight hours a day and then we go home and rehearse another eight hours. Right? That's, that's the slight difference. But 
you always have to operate at the top at the top of your game. So if so if a director gives you a note or a music director says the cutoff is on four, the cutoff is on four, don't mess it up. I told you. Like, right? So the thing is, is that you have to be that specific and that meticulous about those things. So the rehearsal process at times is highly intense because we have a short amount of time to do a lot of work, and people are people have spent $10 million to give us the opportunity to rehearse the show. Like, we can't just be like, ah, I'll get it next week. <laughs> no, right? Go ahead. How did you and Marie Anderson become friends? <laughs> <laughs> She's a stalker. I'm there. I'm not there. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> First of all, she knows everyone, and everyone knows her. No. And she met, she met, um, she met a cast member of mine named Christian at Maurice Price's, which is like a, it's like a, no, it's like a, it's like a piano bar. Yeah, right? Yes, yes, yes. Is he a piano player? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, but he no. sings there all the time. There. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's tiny, it's super tiny. So she met Christian. And at the time, I think you all were doing Little Mermaid. And I was in the original cast of Little Mermaid. So she was talking to Christian, and she's like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. We're going to see Shuffle Along, blah, 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 blah. My daughter's doing Little Mermaid. And then Christian's like, oh, well, if she's doing Little she's playing a seagull, she has to meet one of the, <laughs> she has to meet one of the original seagulls in Little Mermaid. And just so you know, the seagulls used to be major roles in the show. Thank you. <laughs> Back to Broadway, major roles in the show. Okay, anyways, so um, yeah, massive. Anyways, uh, so then, so then Christian was like, hey, there's this girl, she's a little mermaid, she's like a seagull. Would you meet her? And I'm like, of course I'll meet her. So then we met and then like fell in love and they gave me like wonderful <laughs> yummy things. <laughs> yes, you give me food, I'll do anything, right? So um, yeah, the um, the, the seagulls used to be much larger in the show. But then when the show ran out of town, uh, the audience applauded like crazy for the seagulls and like crazy for Ursula. And Ursula had two other songs, right? I'm fully and I'm and Prince, Eric, <laughs> Prince Eric comes on stage for her call and they're like, it was because of the way the show was written. And then Ariel came on stage for her call and we were like, <laughs> and then our producer said, well, here's the problem. <laughs> right now, we have the seagull and the Ursula show. Because we had jokes and the heels. Like, we were like jokes and boom, boom, boom. And doing all this great stuff, best dance numbers. And they were like, and no one cares about the little mermaid. <laughs> and the little mermaid. <laughs> so obviously, there is a problem with the book of the little mermaid. And no one cares about the little mermaid. And the script does not work until the audience applauds when Prince Eric and, and Ariel finally kiss. That's the whole point of the show. So if the audience doesn't applaud and go crazy when that moment finally happens, then there's something wrong with the book. So then we had to go back to the drawing board and really figure it out. We had to be like, okay, so I admit this moment, although it's fierce, doesn't really advance the plot. So I guess we can get rid of it. Get home after the show, learn material for auditions we have in the morning, 
Then if you're in previews, rehearse all day and then do a show at night. Like, what are you? Forget it, forget it, forget it. The divas that I've worked with are people that come into shows that don't normally do Broadway. And I don't think they're divas because they're divas. I think they're divas because they're insecure. So they try and like put on, mm, I'm here on Broadway, right? Like, uh, who was it? The only team I really worked with, wait, which one is famous? Hillary Duff or Haley Duff? Hillary. Hillary. Okay, so Haley was in the show with us in Hairspray. And like, she was this total diva. And I was like, we were all like, how are you a diva? A, your sister's famous, not you. <laughs> B, the line reading is, link here. That's how you're supposed to say it. I don't know what you're doing. So like, do your homework and like, diva out the door. Like, what? like it doesn't work, right? She was the only diva and now she's like one of my best friends. So, not really good. I can text her, can't remember her name. Anyway. Uh, uh, what was the name? Uh, right. right. Thank you.